All right, so today's wiring. Uh, I actually started out trying to record this about an hour ago and apparently didn't hit record, so we're going to do it again, uh, just a little ahead of the game here. Uh, I was actually showing how I use the crimpers and how everything went together and all that fun stuff to kind of show you how these old style, uh, 56 series style connections work, and uh, apparently I never hit record. So uh, anyway, what I've got set up here is I stripped all the old wiring out and I got all my new wires in here that are all color-coded to work with uh, the truck and the ECM, so everything kind of makes sense. And I am actually going to label these wires. I've got clear heat wrap over here, or shrink wrap over here, I should say, and I forgot my label maker, so I am actually going to label every one of these wires so it makes sense uh, if I ever sell the truck. So don't plan on it, but you never say never. Um, so basically what I've got set up here is this ties into, and I talked about this in an earlier video, this ties into uh, this connector on my truck here, which is part of the American Auto Wire Harness. It's got some switched, uh, some ignition, some switched accessories and um, uh, constant lines in there. So I basically got it set up so that this red wire goes to the ECM, which is actually kind of confusing, but because it's a switched wire. So it uh, comes out of here switched. And also coming out of that wire, I've got this purple wire here that runs through uh, the brake switch, which you can't see up there. And what that does is it sends a constant 12 volts to the ECM for the torque converter. So when you hit the brakes, it, it breaks that 12 volts, it goes to ground, and it tells the computer to release the torque converter. Um, I've also got this orange and this pink. They go to the Dakota Digital. We've got a switch and a constant there. Um, got a black and a brown. I didn't have any tan, so I'm gonna use brown, but those are going to uh, the fuel sender, or fuel level sender in the back of the truck. I got this white wire that's gonna go through the bulkhead. This is actually a uh, it's an expansion wire for later. It's, I'm going to run it all the way back to the ECM, but it's uh, if I want to move the uh, fuel pump out or a fuel pump relay out into the engine bay, uh, I've got that. So I've got fan one, fan two, and then that blue wire right there is actually uh, 12 volts when the brakes are applied. That is actually from the truck harness, and that goes to a, a third brake light, which this truck doesn't have. So I'm going to use that. Actually, it interfaces with the yellow wire on here. So that one's a little bit confusing, but uh, I don't want to splice in any wires, but uh, to the yellow wire. And what that does is tell the uh, ECM when the brakes are on. So that's pretty much it. This purple wire here is actually just the extension of this one, just on the other side of the switch. Um, I'm also going to put, I got this uh, Delphi, this is a, is it a 10 pin connector. I'm gonna put that, all these wires are gonna go into that and then interface with the, the uh, uh, LS harness just so I can have a uh, uh, detachment point so that if I want to take something out I can unhook it here and it's all free so I'm going to run all these wires are going to go through that connector that is a uh, I think it's a Metropac GT280 I think it's one of the newer ones the, the smaller compact ones it's rated for like 40 some amps or something like that which all I'm running through is signals and low voltage or low, low current stuff so um so now I'm just going to kind of clean all these wires up and start putting them up behind the dash and attaching everything. And then I've also got to run my 10 gauge. It pops up through the floor here, goes through that, uh, you can't really see it, but you can see the brown right there. Uh, goes through that uh, relay panel there and then goes back out. And I'm also going to run these two, the black and the brown, back to the tank so I can have a fuel level sender hooked up to the Dakota gauges. So um that's pretty much it i'm kind of rambling here i had a real nice video and i apologize i just didn't hit record so i am going to kind of show uh, i'll show some crimping on those because those are those are pretty simple all the, all the metropack stuff is really really simple here i've got these i borrowed these from a buddy I actually bought the cheap set and the cheap set actually works really well on these um the problem i have with these older uh packard 56 series is the terminals themselves are really thick, so you've got to have a good set of crimpers to get those crimped down. The newer stuff here, I think from about the weather pack forward, so you got all the weather packs, um, all of the uh, metro packs, you know, the three or four different series of those, and then you got the GT series as well. So, But they work great for that because they're real thin uh, terminals, so they, they crimp really easy. Um, but uh, anyway, so I'm going to kind of get to work here, and uh, I'll pick back up here in a minute. So I thought I'd come down here and show uh, those of you who've never seen the back of one of these before uh, what it looks like. So this is obviously, this is not stock. This is an, uh, an American Auto Wire uh, fuse panel and bulkhead. So uh, what I have done here is there's, there was actually three extra holes uh, in the bulkhead, or positions, I should say. Uh, so I've got my uh, green, blue, and white wires there that I just uh, put terminations on, put terminals on, and uh, the same thing on the other side of the firewall. 
And what I can do is that gets my uh, uh, trigger wires to go through the bulkhead so I don't have to drill extra holes in the firewall. Uh, pretty trick. So uh, these things are, uh, so this comes apart. So the fuse panel actually attaches to the bulkhead itself and then it all bolts to the, uh, to the firewall. But I just kind of want to show how I was running my wires through the firewall, through the bulkhead. So I spent some time here and I got everything uh, sorted my thoughts, got everything running the right direction, all the wires going to the right places, uh, everything interfaced with the car. Uh, I've actually got the uh, BIM module up here uh, mounted just to make sure that the OBD2 cable was long enough. So basically how this works is it kind of breaks down is we've got two tie-ins to the truck. We've got actually three. There's two connectors here for the stock gauges and then the one connector up here uh, for power. So I've got wires going every which way. Uh, this bundle here is going to go to the uh, Dakota module, which is going to mount right up here uh, once I get that ironed out. Uh, and then I've got a bunch of wires that go from it, they go down, and that bundle of wires right there also goes down to the ECM. So we've got wires going to the car, to the ECM, and to the, and to the Dakota, and, and all in between. So there's a lot of wires to be sorted out, but got it all. Everything's uh, color-coded and good to go. The only wire that... Uh, and it bug bugs me a little bit because my OCD, the only wire that doesn't match stock is the positive on the fuel tank. I ended up using gray because I did not have tan. Uh, the brown was actually the check engine light coming from the ECM, and I didn't want two browns in the, in the bundle, so I went ahead and just used gray. Uh, I'm going to label all these, so it'll be it'll mean no, nothing big on that, on that end to, to uh, track this down later. But... Uh, um, so everything is in. I've got the, grab this flashlight here. I've got all the wires. You can kind of see them all back there. Uh, the only one, I don't have the, uh, the Dakota oil pressure in there yet. I gotta, uh, I'm gonna strip this all back down and wrap it in harness tape, but I just wanted to check routing and everything, but um, everything's good to go. The harness that I extended for the tack harness isn't quite long enough to run up and around like I have all the other wires. So I'm actually just gonna kind of cheat it across uh, right there as it's kind of shown. Uh, and going up to it, which that'll be fine. It's just that one wire. So, um, you know, the carpet comes up to, you know, I, I believe about here. So you won't see much of that wire there. And I just kind of wanted those to just loop up and around so I didn't have a big bulge of wires. And plus, I don't have anything to connect the wires to here. So I uh, kind of wanted to keep that simple. So I've got them kind of running down along the hump here uh, coming out. Uh, I've got the uh, OBD2 and the TAC module. And the TAC module is going to sit here. OBD2 is going to sit on this little rib right here. Uh, to keep that up and then the rest of the wires go this way and they come down here and I have them just terminated right now I'm actually going to put this connector on there right now so that I can interface with this Bundle of wires coming off the ECM. So I just kind of wanted to put a connector there so that everything is is disconnectable um, I, I don't like running hard wires from point A to point B with no uh, way of disconnecting them. So um that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm going to actually probably uh, shoot some video of this thing here. I've never, never actually used this style connector, so I'm assuming it crimp, crimps on the same way. Um, and then I will uh, put the connector on that end. I've got to run those two wires through the floor here. I got the grommets from the fuel tank uh, where the fuel lines used to go. So I'm going to run those wires through the floor with this wire here. Uh, that should wrap up all the wiring in here. So I can um, flip the carpet back over. Uh, mount the ECM. I'm going to build a little bracket to mount that uh, harness there or this uh, relay center so it's kind of accessible from the front so you can see it from the looking in that way uh, but that's not a big deal and I'm honestly thinking about taking this flex loom off of these uh, wires here because it's it's kind of a big bulky mess of wires so I think if I can split it down and I can lay it out flat and kind of and tape it maybe just to get it laid a little bit flatter the seat comes out and covers all this up, but it's just, it's a big, huge hump of, of wires there. So I'm going to see what I can do. Maybe thin that out a little bit, and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and put this uh, connector on here. All right, so I went ahead and tried one of these just so I didn't look like an idiot on the, on camera here. But uh, these just go on actually just like a, uh, a Metro Pack or a Weather Pack. Um, this is a little bit more like a, a Metro Pack. Uh, just... A crimp on the wire and then a crimp on the insulator uh, and, and, and plug here, uh, gas, I forget what they call these things, but I don't have the proper tool for that. So what I'm just kind of doing is I just kind of bump it with the uh, uh, the, the crimper here and then uh, just make sure it's tight on there because that's that's really all it needs to be done. So and makes a really nice kit so or a nice uh, connection. So we'll go ahead and do this purple wire here. This is actually for 
uh, what is this one? The purple is uh, 12 volts all the time, I think, which is, or, yeah, that's right. Sorry, I'm kind of mumbling here. It's getting kind of late. So, um, yeah, they strip off a little bit. Uh, well, probably should put your boot on first. It'd be a little easier to thread over that, but so put your boot on. Get your terminal lined up. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but I get the wire in there, just kind of uh, inside there. So you don't want to strip off much. You know, that's probably that's probably a quarter inch. That's probably too much. But uh, then you just use the crimper here. Can't figure out which one I used here. It's kind of a small one here. I don't know if this is actually showing up on camera, but uh, let's try this and see what it does. It kind of starts the crimp there, and then I move down one to kind of finish the crimp. And that's it. Puts a real nice crimp on there. Wires crimped in there tight. It's not going anywhere, and uh, that's it. So then I just kind of push this boot. It gets a little tough here because I don't have perfect tools for this, but and I'm using this other crimper here with the biggest opening on it just to kind of get it to go around. Kind of do that. And I'm just kind of bumping it this direction just so it stays around. That's it. So now I just got to do the rest of these. Uh, I got nine wires here, so I got a 10 pin connector, so I'm gonna have one extra open up, but uh, uh, it's pretty simple here. Um, this is one of those nice connectors too, that when you push it in, it actually has this locking tab, so you can't disconnect it, which is kind of nice. Uh, not that there's gonna make me unplug this under the seat, but uh, uh, nice, it's weather tight. Um, I'm just going ahead and putting these gaskets on here because you'll never get that uh, last bit of material to wrap all the way around the wire, so. Uh, it doesn't need the gasket, obviously. There's actually a, an internal gasket in here, too. So this is going to be a watertight connection inside the KI, which is not necessary. But I like these uh, these connectors here because they're really small. So this is this is the most recent uh, Delphi uh, connector here. So a 10-pin, I mean, you know, this is this is pretty small. I mean, it's, I mean, it's still pretty big. But, uh, you know, a 10-pin in any of the uh, older generation connectors, just, they're, they're pretty big. So... And this uh, if Series 56, it's in these old cars. They didn't even make a 10, but I think the highest they went to is six, I think. And it's it's pretty big. You know, that's the one up under the dash. There's a five pin, and it's huge. So, um, but that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and crimp the rest of these things and not bore you guys with that. But I just kind of want to show how those went on there. So they're pretty simple. I mean, obviously, I had the luxury of these really nice crimpers here I bought from a buddy. Um, I do have some that I bought on Amazon here. I don't know if you can see those or not, but you know they they work pretty good. They just don't have quite the leverage that these uh, these do here. So uh, I'm kind of using a combination of all of them right now. But uh, uh, that's kind of how it goes. So we're gonna keep on plugging away and get this thing finished up. All right, so I got the uh, connector in, uh, interfacing the ECU to the truck. Uh, everything went really well. Um, one thing that was interesting is this is the power feed that goes to the. Uh, uh, LS harness here and the wire actually um, it was a terrible crimp so this is the connector here and probably not gonna be able to see that and take my word for it but uh, what happened was the first crimp was on the wire and the second crimp wasn't on the uh, insulation at all so it uh, just broke so <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna track down one of those um, terminals there uh, hopefully that's something I can buy here local I just need one so um, I don't know. The more and more I'm, I'm, I'm using this harness, the more and more I'm not a big fan. I mean, I'm here. I paid for it. Everything fits well, but it's just so many things that I would improve upon. Um, there's a local guy. Well, a guy that used to live here, uh, works for painless, uh, harness or painless wiring now. And they make a harness that's ba basically like a build your own. And I was talking to him and I, I should have just done that. And I could have built exactly what I wanted. And I had to worry about this, uh, but I don't know. It's here. I'm going to make it work. I'm almost done, but little stuff like this, I'm going to be honest with you, that pisses me off. Like why, like why, you know, this is, this is your job. This is your one job is making wire harnesses. And, you know, I just look at the crimps on those things. They're not, they're not spectacular. It makes me a little nervous about the rest of the truck. Um, I, I don't know if, if this is the, the low man on the totem pole building these, uh, 
uh, relay centers, but uh, just looking at these, they all look fine. Uh, I'm going to take a gander at a couple of the ones uh, on the engine and see, but uh, I don't know. That stuff just drives me nuts, you know. This is this is a product you're selling. you got one job, and you, you failed at it. But I'll see if I can't figure out something on that. Um, other than that, everything's good to go. I need to run the wires to the floor for the uh, uh, fuel tank. Uh, these are extra wires here. I'm going to actually cap those off. I don't need any of these. These are uh, speedometer tack um ect lead an oil pressure lead and all that stuff that doesn't pertain to this uh there is one wire in here the orange wire i think i'm going to run that one back out um it goes to uh the park neutral signal uh on the on the, on the switch on the transmission um I, I thought it was weird that that wasn't included in it but it's an optional thing and i'm surprised it doesn't run all the way out but i'm going to run that back out and attach it to excuse me, the uh, park neutral switch so that I have the signal so the ECU knows that the truck's in park uh, just for uh, idling purposes and whatnot. So uh, not a big deal, but I can run that back out. Um, but other than that, um, well, also I've got to find some terminals. I'm running 10 gauge wire for my uh, fuel pump that I'm running through here. Uh, the terminals that came with that thing are for like, I don't know, 16 gauge or 18 gauge. I don't know. There's no way a 10 gauge is going to go in there. So uh, I'm thinking more and more about putting the relay out into the uh, uh, engine bay and using this white wire that I ran through here um, just to trigger it out there just so I can get it out of here because I, I don't know. That makes me a little nervous. So uh, anyway, I'm kind of rambling. It's really late, so I am going to clean up. Everything is good to go in here. Uh, I just need to tidy up some stuff, uh, wire up all the Dakota stuff here. That's all this here. Wire that all up. Um fix the loom on this thing, run a wire back out, um, just do some, some cleaning and kind of put everything back together and we can be done. So um, I'm going to do some research on that uh, power wire there, um, see what we can do as far as terminals there. Um, that relay is rated for, oh, what is it rated for? Uh, 30 amps, which is plenty. Uh, my pump only draws like 20 if you crank the pressure way up so i think i'm going to be drawing like 12 or 13 amps something like that i need to look at the uh the chart but uh it should have no problem uh they suggested running 10 gauges for voltage drop uh from the battery clear to the back of the truck uh so i'll figure out some terminals there but uh anyway that's it for tonight we've got quite a bit done here all the wiring inside the truck is about done so that's a good feeling so i can put the inside back together uh wiring outside is going to be uh in the engine bay, that'll be another video. I'm going to put all the relays in for the fans and the headlights and all that stuff. So uh, that should be pretty straightforward. I bought a bunch of uh, terminals so I can just build my own stuff. But uh, that's it for tonight. Um, uh, like always, uh, please like and subscribe. Um, tell your friends. Share it. Uh, please comment. I'd love to hear from everybody. Uh, but uh, anyway, I appreciate everybody watching, and we will see you next time.